has an opportunity to review them? Is well, you, you can go and you can go and have it approved without my um, involvement because I wasn't at the last meeting anyhow. Okay, okay. that's that's true. Okay, so I'll is make, there any discussion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, Candace makes a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Was that you, Marty? That was me. Okay, thank you. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we will next on the agenda go through the commissioner's reports. Um, and let's see, in no particular order, I'm going by who's on my screen. Um, <laughs> Marty, would you like to start with the tree program and give us an update? Okay, um, the long awaited um, project to uh, redo the trees on the residential side of 2nd Street is well underway. Um, the Bartlett has come in and removed all the failing small trees and planted um, replanted the planting spaces. There's a few things left to be done that we're gonna, we're working on getting those done in the next few weeks. Um, they're not staked yet. <laughs> we had to uh, really emphasize with one of the planters that we need stakes here because we get a lot of, a lot of wind. Mm -hmm. um, that should be finished up in the next couple of weeks. Um, I went with, uh, with Janet and a contractor um, looking at the, the forested buffer at Canary Creek subdivision. Um, to look at whether we need to um, be pruning for, you know, branches and trees that that may come down and be a danger, um, and we're getting a we're getting some quotes on that. Um, and in preparation for what I hope will be a grant application next year, um, the uh, Taryn Davidson, it's T A R Y N Davidson. Uh, who's an urban forester with the Delaware Forest Service, came down and, and walked um, that portion of West 2nd Street with Janet and I, and we talked about um, uh, all the trees that are there, and I was pleasantly surprised that um, her assessment was that there's a lot of trees there that kind of look rough and ready, but they're not dangerous, and there's, there's really not a safety need to bring them down. There are a few that are dead or almost dead that will will come down so um i'm um i'm doing a rough grad application at this point based on her advice and uh i hope we can uh we can apply apply some some resources to that next year and um really get that portion of fourth uh, street uh, spruced up this is for west fourth street between burton and ocean view and as you may remember Two years ago, we did the portion between Ocean View and New Road. So this would kind of match that, hopefully. Um, in addition, um, Janet and I have been taking tree steward training. It's the first year for this. The um, Delaware Forest Service implemented tree steward training and uh, there were, what, about 20 of us in that class, something like that. I think uh, there was about 15 or 20. 15 or 20. It was it was an uh, interesting group and um, with a wide range of prior experience. And, um, but it's funny doing tree steward training without any hands on trees. So it was all done by Zoom. They want to create a real planting opportunity and teaching opportunity for us next spring sometime. And of course that all waits for the developments on the COVID situation, but hopefully we'll get there. Um, but, uh, um, it's it was it was good training as far as it went, but I wish there could be more. So we'll we'll work on that as the years go by. That's it. Okay. Marty, if I may ask, what species of trees are going in on Second Street? Uh, on Second Street, it's a combination of uh, mostly crepe myrtles and um, uh, Coosa dogwood and a few red buds under the. Um, near St. Peter's where they get some shade and uh, one or two Japanese maples. Um, did I get all that right? Yeah. 
I think that's it. Yep. I think right, yeah, I covered all of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for Marty? Okay. Thank you, Marty. Good report. Uh, Warren, would you like okay, to Okay. Mine would be pretty short. Um, the Lewis and Bloom patrons planted about uh, 4,500 bulbs in 1812 Park. Um, they also dug up all of the um, lilies that were planted on top of the slope because they were getting too clumpy. Uh, the, we, they dug up some, oh, I, I don't know how many, originally I think we planted about 100 bulbs. We dug them up and we must have gotten 500 bulbs because they all split. And we took them and sorted them out and we're going to replant 100 of the nicer bulbs, smaller bulbs. Uh, which should last five or six years before we have to dig them up again. And in 1812 Park, uh, in, in, excuse me, in Mary Bessels Park, we planted about 750 tulips and uh, about uh, 150 pansies. Okay. Warren, I forgot to mention, um, on Second Street, a couple of the uh, bump outs that used to have those awful shrubs you know junipers and stuff um those those were cleared out so there's now a big area that doesn't have anything in it right now and we have to decide what to do but if you had any spare tulip bulbs i would be happy to plant them i don't think i have any but i have some daffodils oh i love daffodils. Very nice i will certainly put in daffodils if you have any i have i have plenty would you like would you like to join us planting in Canal Front Park? We have two thousand to plant. Wow. Right, what what day are you doing that? I couldn't make them before I had a lot of scheduling conflict. I think we're I think we're gonna plan for this Friday. This Friday, I might be able to make it. I even have an auger and a drill, so <laughs> if we, you'll need an auger for, for that look in yeah, Canal. It's, it's it's challenging there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or what time will you guys get started on Friday? I would imagine uh, nine o'clock. Would you like to be put on the list, Andrew? Hey, I, I will, and I'll let some of my neighbors know as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions for Warren? No, okay, thank you, Warren. That's great. That, and, really and just one other piece of information. Um, holly bushes are going in the planters on 2nd Street tomorrow. Oh, okay. And um, they will be decorated uh, probably around right at either right before, right after Thanksgiving with some uh, kind of uh, Christmas decoration bows and uh, little birds and Partridge Holly in a pear Perry. tree. <laughs> Excuse me? I said a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Second Street will certainly be looking very festive as as always. So hey Warren, what do you what do you do with those uh, hollies then in the spring? Well, if somebody went has a place to put them in one of their parks, it's they will need irrigation. Uh We'll donate them there. Otherwise, we will, I guess, lift them up and try to sell them at our plant sale. Oh, okay. okay. Are there any other questions for Warren? Okay. Thank you, Warren. Harry, I'll call on you. You're you're still you're okay. Uh, <laughs> Not much has gone on at at our park, but I had an opportunity to walk the park with Marty and Janet while we were looking at um, we're going to have some uh, removal of of some pear trees. So we walked around, we looked at the park. Um, we got a chance to assess trees that need pruning topping we have one that's broken at the top um 
We talked about transplanting some um, seedlings. Uh, so we had a really constructive walk around the park. I think we did one and a half trips, one and a half turns around the park. But uh, we got a chance, the three of us got a chance to uh, really talk and it was very productive. So I was pleased with that. But outside of that, other than walking around the park and getting my shoes wet, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Harry? Comments? Okay, thank you, Harry. Candace. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you all doing? Very well, thank you. So Christine and I uh, were together during a meeting on the Lewis Junction Library Arts Project. And uh, some of you may remember that um, 2018, uh, there was a move afoot to, um, I'll, I'll kind of cut to the chase, cover the big uh, transformer and the um, emergency power system for the library, as well as the um, solar panel um, equipment that is alongside the side of the library. And there, there's still um, an interest in doing something about that. And it, like many projects in life, it's complicated. Uh, it's complicated by many things. It's complicated by the easement and the right of way that on the state owned property along the trail, among other things. Uh, but we did a little walkabout. Andrew joined us. Thank you, Andrew, for being there so we could share with you the ideas that are germinating on this uh, plan to basically replicate a small railroad station where one previously existed in Lewis and then to uh, make it an artistic project that would include the community and community contributions to the artwork that would decorate this structure. Um, so there's a lot to be done on it, but I just wanted to make you aware that it's still um, something that is being considered. Uh, there are uh, in one particular piece of um, action that needs to happen is that the state needs to come back uh, Del Dot needs to come back and give permission for the structure to be put there. And once that kind of tipping point comes along, then lots of these plans can begin to be worked and make into a reality. But until that happens, I just thought I'd tell you who the planning participants are so that you get a, an appreciation for the broad nature of this project and who's been involved and who will be involved down the road. So we've got the Lewis Public Library, we've got Lewis and Bloom and Art in Bloom, of course, as a subsidiary of that. Uh, Mayor and City Council, of course, there'll be uh, permissions required. Parks and Recreation Commission, Christine and I are involved in the planning of this. The Lewis Junction Rail and Bridge Association, and that's a 501c3 that was set up to um, bring railroad cars to the tracks that reside between the library and the um, Stango Park area. The Historic Lewis Byways Commission, Fort Miles Historical Association, Lewis Historical Society, Board of Public Works, and uh, a very important private sector partner, the Shell Brothers, who have offered to pay for this structure that would surround uh, the emergency power equipment. So that just gives you an idea that it's, it's a very complex project. There are lots of participants and we're hopeful that the state of Delaware will send their letter back and say, yes, we agree, you have permission to uh, make this area beautiful and here are the conditions or whatever it is that they uh, decide is required. But um, that project is still alive and well. And that's my report. Wonderful, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Candace on that? I just have a comment, as Candace said, I we had recently the opportunity to meet with that group and as she said there's a lot of different participants and i was impressed with the level of coordination that's going on there uh and it'd be great to see more of that across the city it was, it was it was impressive to see the the coordination and the cooperation wonderful great thank you candace um christine is there 
I don't have anything to add uh, okay. to that. That's basically um, everything that's gone on in our parks, uh, parks since uh, last meeting. Um, um, Candace did a great job of reporting, you know, um, the, the meeting, but um, that's, that's really all we have. Okay, all right, thank you. Lou, I know that you've been busy. I don't know if you have anything, any updates to report. You've uh, I, I really don't. I, I tell you the truth. Like I said, I was really inundated with this move and I have uh, have not really prepared for tonight's meeting. Uh, our next meeting, I'll, I'll definitely be uh, a catch up on what we have done. We've, we've been really, really busy uh, in Zwanendale Park. Uh, as mentioned by Warren, uh, I think Warren mentioned we, we planted 3,800 bulbs and uh, I planted another 400 daffodils and we did uh, probably about 500 uh, pansies uh, and a lot of cleanup. Uh, there, there's been a lot of uh, uh, winds and, and branches that had to be uh, removed from the park and all that. So I'll give you an update next on the next meeting for sure. Okay, all right. Sorry, I, sorry. No, no worries. I, I will add, um, and I, I believe you are on the, the emails that they are uh, donating a tree. We are having a tree donated um, for the holidays for Zwanendale yeah. Park, and that's supposed to be coming uh, Thursday. So um, that's that's one little update for the park. So um, yeah, and you. I guess you're. I guess you're also going to be decorating the other tree we have in the in the park itself. Uh, are you? Which uh, we we do both. We we usually we do, do both. both. Okay. Okay. I'll um I'll talk to the maintenance department about that too, just to make sure. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Uh, Barry, you have updates. Uh, the only thing that I'm working on right now is um we put together a a pickleball facilities investigation committee to uh, look at um what the pickleball needs are in the local area and also come up with some specifications as to possibly how many courts we need or should build and then uh, look at uh, possible sites that um, could be um, used for something like that and then also to uh, search out what kind of resources might be available to to build something like that, whether they be state, local, um, uh, private, or whatever. Uh, but we have um, three people on the uh, committee, uh, Dave Beck, Ariana Assumption, and um, I just forgot the last person's name, um, Jerry um, Kroll. Um, so, and myself, along with, uh, Rod, Rodney Robinson. So the, the five of us will kind of uh, look at all that and uh, update um, the commission on what our progress is, what, uh, what's going on. But we are scheduling a meeting the first week in December uh, to meet and we'll obviously work through the winter. So um, the only other thing I had was um, just the public art. Um, we had to obviously alter um, our um, project uh, for this spring, the uh, water tower that we wanted to do. And uh, we quickly, um, when we found out that that was gonna happen because of COVID uh, in, actually I think record time put together a mural project and and got that up by the end of the summer which I I think is amazing um, and right now we're looking at um, artists and sculptors to uh, do another um, project in Canal Front Park where the water tower was supposed to go we're not sure that we can get the water tower um, this year. So we're looking at alternatives. And just a couple of days ago, I got some emails on some possible artists to look at. So um, 
our next meeting, we'll probably look at um, possibilities. That's all I have, really. Okay. Thank you, Barry. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Barry? Just with respect to the uh, pickleball tennis, is, are they're still utilizing the hour, the hourly sort of court sharing? Does that seem to still be wor working well? Maybe. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, I haven't heard any Great. complaints or whatever. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's worked out well. Okay. Thank you, Barry. Um, so Rodney is excused tonight. Um, Lou, did you have any update on the community garden? And <laughs> probably bedding down for the winter. Uh, again, I, I don't have anything for that, but again, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a catch up. Uh, we've been doing a lot, of, have had a lot of work parties out there, um, expanding the garden, uh, getting it ready for winter and all that. So uh, again, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a good update over the last couple of months on both the community garden and also Zwanville Park. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and finally, I think, uh, Harry, do you have a report from the Historic Lures Farmers Market, their end of year report? Oh, you're, oh, you're muted. muted. I submitted that to you uh, via email. Do you want me right. to read it? Um, did everybody have an opportunity to take a look at that? If there's anything yes. that anybody would like to add or any questions, I think it was pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, the market has one more, one more Saturday, I guess, right? Right, over, over in the uh, parking lot Shields. behind the elementary school. They've been out of the park since, since the fall market began. Um, I don't know. There's no, we're not making any decision or any action on this. So I don't know that we actually have to accept the, the report. Andrew, do you have any feedback on that? No, I, I don't think you have to take, take action if folks haven't had the chance to review it in, in detail. I, I think you could put that off till, till next meeting. Okay. All right. We can defer that. Okay, so that completes the commissioner's reports. I thank you all, uh, wonderful information. Um, we have no old business tonight, so we will move on to new business. Um, the first item is discussion and possible action on the preferred standard time for the Parks and Rec Commission regular meeting. Now, the reason I, I put that on the agenda is because we seem to have migrated to an earlier time and we never actually had a discussion about <laughs> what is the preference and what, you know, what works for everyone. So um, previously, and this year has, has been obviously quite different than most. Um, I know there was a period of time earlier in the year where um, we weren't having meetings regularly, just trying to figure out how to do the work that we do in a very different way. Um, and then some changes in, in staff and whatnot. So previously they were being held at seven um, and then they migrated to 6 p.m. So I'd like to put that out for discussion um, as to what is everybody's preference as far as your schedules and, and whatnot. Well, I, I prefer seven. This is Lou. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I prefer either 4.30 or seven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. Anybody else have a preference? I prefer earlier, but that's me. Okay. Six is fine for me. So we have two sevens, a six. I mean, it just seems like when you do it at seven o'clock, if it goes, if the meeting goes late, then it really, it's really late. <laughs> but 
I, I kind of like them earlier too. My only question is, especially if, um, uh, for right now with Zoom, with, with everybody Zooming, most people can probably participate. But um, uh, if we ever go back to, you know, meeting at City Hall, it gets harder for people to actually physically get to City Hall, um, especially people who still are working and not retired. Right. So. So for so, now, I'm up for anything. I would a compromise of six thirty work, maybe. If, that's you know, what we're doing. <laughs> that's, I mean, well, I like six o'clock. Mary likes six o'clock. Candace and Christine, do you have a preference? No preferences. No, I'm fine either no. way. So we've we. It seems like we have a fifty-fifty split. <laughs> um, I. I think I, I think Andrew raises a, a, a reasonable compromise um, of six thirty. I like that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm for so, six thirty. Do I have a motion to change the standard time of our regular meeting to six thirty? So moved. Thank I heard you. a bell. I must. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Candace. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Harry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No, no one opposed. So we will move forward with a 630 meeting time. Uh, and we can always revisit that if need be. So thank you. Now, um, moving on to uh, our next order of business. We have for presentation and consideration a major uh, subdivision plan. Um, so I hope you've all had the opportunity to review um, what was attached to the agenda. Um, we're asking for um, discussion related to the existing open space in, in that plan and any adjacent park areas or other natural features within the city that could be impacted. Um, I'm sure you've noticed that Janelle is with us tonight, um, so I'm going to ask her to um, open this up for further discussion. Janelle, I think there's something wrong with your sound. It, it's it's very. Uh, I don't, how would you describe that? It sounds like a man. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you're playing a four, a, thir, a forty five record on a thirty three. Right, yeah. right. It sounds like, sounds like a. No. Sounds like a robot. Sounds like a robot. <laughs> you try to summon. You know, is that is that a gaming headset? It sounds like it's got a funny yeah. setting on it. <laughs> it's a funny setting on it that's not not rendering your voice in a very good way. Sounds like the ogre. Does this from work Shrek. better? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Headset went busted tonight. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that one. So I'm Janelle. I'm the planning and development officer for the city. Um, so we received an application for a major subdivision as part of the review of the major subdivision. The application comes before the Parks and Recreation Commission for your consideration on the existing, its potential impact on existing and proposed open space or adjacent park areas or other natural features within the city. Um, you make a recommendation then to the Planning and, and Zoning Commission, the Planning Commission. This is just a five lot major subdivision. Um, typically, you, you might have gotten used to seeing larger ones. This one's just five lots. They're proposing um, a little over 6,000 square feet in open space, um, which is a little over 10% of the overall uh, open space of the development. It is adjacent to lots B, C, and D, which are on the eastern side of the property, which means that then um, abuts property that is owned by the city. Um, the maintenance will be by the homeowners association. They're gonna own it, maintain it. Um, 
Right now, it's just proposed to be grass. They're not proposing any trees or street trees. With the development, they are proposing on maintaining the large eco tree that is on the property. Um, and if you, as part of the applicant, uh, the packet, um, there was a large tree on the the western side of the property that they are proposing to maintain. Um, there aren't proposed at this time any sidewalks along along the road. However, there are existing sidewalks along Kings Highway that actually do tie into the into the rail trail that is pretty much adjacent to this property. Um, so there is uh, walking and biking access to the property. Um, so is this on the other side of the bike trail from the uh, library? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, and it's, that, it's actually on the same side it's on, as the library. The same yeah. side it's the on library. the other side of the berm. So behind yeah. the library. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So on the other side of the berm. It's adjacent to the property that the library is on. Right. It's yeah. farther yeah. west. It's the, right. Eastern, right. the western part. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, so they are adjacent, again, very close to the library, walkable to the library, walkable to the bike path. Um, bike access to the bike path. Um, but there's no sidewalks? Not on the so not on the proposed street. That is something they will be asking relief from from the Planning and Zoning Commission. And then eventually why why would we build a new subdivision without sidewalks? I can actually bring up their attorney and their engineer because they are with us tonight and they can help address, answer some of those questions. I would certainly question that. I mean And again that is something that um, you can have a recommendation on, but that determination does fall under um, planning commission, and eventually mayor and, and council have. No, I understand, but I, 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 I'm just. I, I would just yeah. question that. So I'm bringing up Vince Robertson, who's the attorney, and then I'm going to bring up um, Robert Palmer, who's the applicant's engineer, um, and they can happily answer any other questions, and I can answer any other questions that you might have. No, I, I just really think they need to be careful about sidewalks and access because uh, e even in Mariner's Retreat, I mean, they've got sort of a trail through there and it's not handicap accessible. It's like, how, how do you build new sidewalks and stuff and, you know, where you cross the street, it's not, there's no dip in the sidewalk. I mean, I don't even know how that happens, but anyway. Janelle, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure. This is Vince Roberts and everybody. I wasn't sure if I'm on video and audio or just audio this just evening. Just audio. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for, for allowing us to make this presentation. Again, I'm Vince Robertson with Park Cassidy, Girk, and Swayze, um, working with Jerry Verdon and, and as Janelle, or Ms. Cornwell mentioned, um, with Bob Palmer from Beacon Engineering. I thought it'd be helpful just to, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but a little bit of history in this property. It's owned by Jerry Verdon, uh, and his family's owned it for, frankly, for generations. Um, and he was looking and is looking to make it so that his family members uh, can uh, ultimately have houses on what was his family property. Um, one of the things that's unique about it is that for whatever reason, well, I know the reason, I'm not gonna go into the history of it, but there's a split zoning of the property. The front part of it is R4 and the back part of it is R2. Part of that had to do, Mr. Verdon's had been a really uh, good beneficial resident and property owner in Lewis. He, he did two things. One, he did a land swap with the, um, the city of Lewis so that there could be uh, the library built on a regularly rectangular shaped property. That was one of the things that led to the split zoning. The second thing he did was actually convey without asking for any payment, the 20 foot wide utility easement uh, to the city and the Board of Public Works so that the new library would actually have sewer service and you actually see that, that easement on the property. But as part of that land swap and some other circumstances, he ended up with a split zone property where about a third of it zoned R4 and the density that's permitted in R4, and a third of it that's zoned R2 and the density that's permitted in R2. We actually went to the city uh, to get it all zoned one way, um, so there wasn't a split zoning. We got a, a positive recommendation from the Planning Commission. Um, the uh, mayor and commissioners didn't see it that way, 
Um, so we actually appealed that decision to court just to sort of preserve our rights under that appeal and then started meeting with the mayor and um, Ms. Cornwell uh, and Ms. Townsend and the city's attorney and our engineers um, and some others to try to figure out how we could make this work. We've had a bunch of meetings, good productive meetings with the city, um, which led to the subdivision plan that you see in front of you that Janelle's put on the screen actually. Um, and with regard to the open space, we went through a couple of different iterations of that and sort of brainstormed on it, um, you know, all of us sort of collectively. We started with the ginkgo tree that Ms. Cornwell mentioned, looking to preserve that. And we ended up with sort of initially an, an isolated and open space that preserved the ginkgo tree, which is very important to Mr. Verdon, I should point out. That's been one of his, his main concerns throughout this whole process is the preservation of the ginkgo tree. But that open space wasn't really usable to even the other lots that much. It was just sort of there. And then I think it was actually the city, it might've been Ms. Cornwall or Ms. Townsend, um, who mentioned, you know, can we put the open space on the side of the property where the library is? That way, you know, sort of visually, it expands the, the library and the park area next door to it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just sort of more meaningful that way. Um, you know, it just, it's not a piece of pocket open space that maybe five lots would have, but will it really wouldn't be usable and really wouldn't add much to the city or to the subdivision, or should we put it over there on the northern side next to the library where it, you know, sort of somewhat expands, certainly visually, the okay. open space area in the library. And then at the same time, um, which we'll deal with at the Planning Commission, but put in the restrictive covenants um, about um, preserving that ginkgo tree, you know, that that would be, um, either through a preservation easement or some other, you know, method of, of maintaining that, that ginkgo tree. Um, so that's how we, um, as I said, it was a good productive process, a lot of conversations back and forth, how we ended up with the design with the open space at the rear of lots um, B, C, and D, um, and adjacent to the library. The question about the sidewalks, um, so We've had a lot of conversations with Dell Dot. Um, we're going to have to talk to certainly the city and the planning commission about sidewalks. I want to be clear: there are sidewalks on Kings Highway, um, and they will be fully ADA um, compliant. Um, we don't have sidewalks on the interior roadway, just because of the size of that roadway um, and sort of the the nature of it. Um, and so that's something that we'll be dealing with at the planning commission. But given the small number of lots, the fact that we're working with the city to try to come up with a good plan that resolves, you know, an appeal from the mayor and commissioners. Um, and and that frankly, that doesn't really also over design the subdivision for, you know, the, the small number of lots that are upon it. Um, you know, because lot B and lot A are gonna have direct access to the sidewalks on Kings Highway. Um, so it, it leaves uh, lots uh, C, D and E, um, and they would not be really the only ones um, you know, that let me put it this way, there's not gonna be a lot of traffic on that road where they can't use said lane to, to gain access to Kings Highway, um, which is a great spot because that sidewalk system on Kings Highway, as I think Ms. Cornwell mentions, integrated into the junction, junction of Breakwater Trail. The people will be able to, some of them, you know, can, I suppose, unless they put fences up, walk out their back door to the library property, but certainly they can all just, you know, walk around that corner and out the, the, on bikes or, you know, walking to the library or to the trailer in the downtown Lewis or whatever. So, um, you know, based on, as I said, the collective process, you know, we think this is a really good plan. Uh, it exceeds by a little bit, the 10% that's required of open space under the code. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. Palmer if he has any comments, but we'd ask that you act favorably on the, the open space submission that we have. And thanks again for your time this evening. Now, Mr. Palmer, do you have anything that you'd like to add? I do. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Good evening, everybody. Um, I, just to kind of echo um, uh, Vince's comments, um, Seb Lane is little, little more than a, a shared driveway that you would find out in the country. And um, uh, the idea or the notion of um, not installing sidewalks to serve um, three homes was somewhat in an environmental decision uh, in that it eliminates um, a, sig a significant amount of impervious which is you know beneficial for infiltration even though we're not in 
a, um, we're not in either an excellent recharge area or any of the city's wellhead protection areas. It's, it's still important to try to minimize um, land coverage. Um, that was kind of a, you know, a big driving force as to why we are not proposing sidewalks. And um, uh, dead end streets like this uh, are, are not something that's, that's new to the city of Lewis. Um, school lane, which uh, I grew up just outside of Lewis. Um, school lane, um, my dad told me that's been there forever. Um, and I remember when I was a kid when Drake Knoll was developed um, and I don't believe it has sidewalks either. So this is kind of the um, semi-secluded, um, you know, as I said, a shared driveway type notion uh, for lots uh, C, D, and E. I, I would just note that um, I know developments that were done years ago did not we're not required to have sidewalks. I live in Pilot Town Village and we have very wide streets and no sidewalks. And, and um, But I, I think the recent developments the city has approved, like the one at uh, Anglers Road and Market Street, um, that's, I think that's even smaller than this, or it's about the same size and, and the city required sidewalks there. So um, I guess we'll see how the Planning Commission comes out on this. Are there other comments, questions from commissioners? Any uh, recommendations for the open space? Well, yeah, I, I have questions about the open space. I, I'm looking at the size. I mean, that's of, really what we should be talking yeah. about the space. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about now, Barry. No, so, no. <laughs> uh, um, so it looks like. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just wondering what the plans are for it. It looks like there's plenty of room to have certainly trees and um, I guess other amenities as time goes on, but but certainly trees. And I'm wondering why there's no plan to plant at least a few trees there. I, I would think a couple of uh, medium-sized trees at the least would be a good addition to that. Plus, I'm, I'm looking at the, at the narrow part that goes behind lot C. If, I, if my calculations are correct, that's only about 10 feet wide. Um, it wasn't clear to me, but about 10 feet wide if I'm getting that right. Um, and I'm wondering if that's intended to be a kind of a walking trail situation or if it's just intended to be kind of a buffer between the development and the, um, the Stango Park extended area. I, I wonder if that should be planted with shrubs and, and maybe some small trees or something. Uh, I think that would enhance the beauty a great deal. So this is Vince Robertson, and I hope you can hear me. Um, we thought about that, and that, that's kind of the nature of it. I mean, it's as much a buffer as it is, like I said, an, an extension of of the open area um, for the library. One of the things, and I don't think we have any objection to planting trees and, and shrubs back there. Um, you know, and we weren't sure how the city wanted to approach it, whether they wanted it to be, you know, open or whether, the, you know, some... Um, some, some vegetation that would be, um, you know, in accordance with what naturally appears in this area. Um, one of the things that we also have to deal with is the berm that I think somebody mentioned earlier and, and I, maybe in one of the other topics on the agenda. We also, Mr. Verdon's been dealing with that for a little while because that's sort of created almost a, I don't want to say it's a flooding issue, but it's, it's sort of serving as a dam a little bit. We've been trying to work with the city um, to see if we couldn't get that removed, because I think that would also help that whole area. But, you know, I don't, there's no objection to, to planting some trees in there for sure. Or vegetation like we talked about. Yeah, that, that I, I would recommend that. According, according to the, um, the code, as you, as you well know, um, it includes recommendations that the, or policies that the, I'm trying to find my exact wording. I have it here in this mound of paper that um, um, that the you know the open space has to have adequate access to the residents um, and also um, they look at um, the potential for contiguous open space network throughout the city and and you know contiguity with open space areas adjacent to the land. So this is a perfect opportunity to 
to kind of um, have some harmony between the Stango extended and I know if, if, if it's not yet clear what's going to happen with the berm, uh, that's kind of hard to plan for, but is this, can you orient me, where, where does the berm, where is the berm in relation to this orange line? It, it looks like to hell. With that. So, so the bottom of the berm, right about where that orange line is, is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Well, that makes it hard to plan for what to do with that space if there's a potential for that burn being regraded. Hey, Janelle, do you have a copy of the preliminary um, the preliminary plans that we submitted? Um, EX 1.1, which is page three in that set, um, if you have it available, shows the berm and its proximity to Mr. Burton's property. Not readily accessible. But gotcha. if you want to see it, I can, I can go through and find it. No, that's okay. I just I thought it would be helpful for the uh, Parks and Rec folks to uh, to see the berm. Um, we actually did survey it, and um, um, the berm's about three feet high at its high at, in in the center. Um, but it basically runs from um, essentially the ten feet. Um, get my bearings here. 10 feet east of the um, easterly right of way of the um, Junction Breakwater Trail property. Um, and then it, it runs all the way out to the Freeman Highway right of way. So it does, it does kind of cut off the, even though the open space that we're proposing is contiguous, it does have a tendency to cut off our open space from um, the city's open space at least from a functional perspective. Okay. So that berm would be, okay. it, it'd that's be very helpful to remove that berm. And, and that's something that, that we've had covered separate and apart from this development. Um, we've had conversations with the city about removing that. I, I, and I think that, um, you know, the city's, I don't think is in disagreement with removing it. It's just a matter of sort of when they were going to do it. Okay. Okay. Um, let me add that I very, very much appreciate you saving the ginkgo tree. It's wonderful that we're taking good care of our older trees in the area. That's a great, that's a great asset to the whole community. Um, yeah, I, I would, uh, I would uh, request that we have a recommendation that there be some trees in the open areas. And um, a lot of that would be subject to what your, uh, you know, whatever your landscape designer wants to do. but. Um, um, I would recommend in favor of at least one medium-sized tree in each of the, the, the north and the south uh, of these wider areas and um, possibly some shrubs and smaller trees along the back there, um, if that fits with your plans about what, what the use is for that, uh, that back strip. I think that does fit with our plans. There was mention of, you know, it, it's passive, it's not active, you know, it's not something where we're going to be putting in a a walking trail because really that'd be kind of redundant with all the interconnectivity on the library property between Freeman mm -hmm. Highway and the bike trail and everything else. So I mean and I think that sort of recommendation makes sense. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Uh, Christine or and Candace, um, any comments from from you from the perspective of the harmony with the extended stango um i'm delighted to see some open space adjacent i think it's wonderful to have an extension of that area um, the garden for all ages plan had been put on hold but uh having some additional green space is terrific mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, uh, I would uh, echo uh, Marty's request to plant more trees. <laughs> okay. Yes. Are, are there any recommendations? And again, I, I believe looks like it, <laughs> it looks like Harry has a question. Okay. I, I have a recommendation. Uh, rather than just have lawn, I think we should include some native trees, native plants, native shrubs which would encourage uh, a healthier environment because it would bring in birds, uh, butterflies, caterpillars, all those fun things that 
are much more productive than just simply uh, grass. Thank you. I'd be very happy to submit a list of some really positive trees that they could consider. They're easily available, but uh, they, they really do help the landscape and help us. So if you um, can provide that, Harry, and if anybody else has, uh, you know, thoughts on specific species of trees and shrubs, I can um, put that into a report for um, Janelle with the PRC's recommendations um, so that that can be part of the Planning Commission's uh, information. Um, I would just like to add that it would be nice to perhaps continue planting of oak, uh, pin oak trees along uh, the Theodore C. Freeman Highway. Um, the existing planning, um, uh, I think it's Quercus palustris, the pin oak that's already existing in, uh, along the highway. It would be nice to, you know, continue with that, sort of echo that planning along the highway and, and make it a little bit more of a you know, cohesive area instead of it being um, di divided, it would, it would um, add to the flow. Uh, the, the, the pin oak would be one of my top recommendations anyway. And they um, seem to be, the ones that are, ex the existing planning seems to be doing well mm -hmm. in the area. We haven't had any problems with um, failure of those trees. Uh, along yeah, they, they, they love growing along this area. They really yeah. do. Once you put them in, they don't need a whole lot in the in the way of pruning. They seem to be resistant to a lot of pests too. Great. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Janelle, do you have anything else on that? I do not, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Thank you, and I will uh, get those recommendations collected for you and uh, submitted for your documentation. Do we need a motion for the recommendation? Um, yeah, probably. So we have the recommendation for trees to be planted in an open space. Um, including native trees, plants, shrubs um, to attract wildlife and other benefits. Um, additionally, there was the recommendation for in that narrow space behind lot C for some shrubs. Um, so do I have a motion uh, on those recommendations to be submitted to the Planning Commission. I make that motion. Thank you, Harry. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks I appreciate it. And I'm sure Mr. Verdon does as well. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. So um, that has taken us through our agenda for this evening. Um, do I have, are there any questions or comments before we adjourn? I just have one. Uh, yeah. So we got a couple emails this week from a citizen regarding the, the bench, the maintenance of the benches on the beaches. So then we got this, Anne Marie and I got discussing whether it might make sense to have that remit be part of parks and rec in the future. So it's not part of the agenda tonight, but I wanted to introduce it. Maybe we have that on next time's agenda to discuss the merits or not of having beach one and beach two and kind of the, the maintenance of those kinds of things and other improvements being part of parks and rec. Ultimately, obviously the commissions are, and the committees are part of the mayor's remit, but I think it's maybe good for us to discuss you know, what are the merits, if, if any, to be to that being part of it? For what Anne-Marie said, it's been discussed in the past, but 
um, you know, maybe worth discussing again in light of, um, you know, the attention here because the, the streets does a great job, but it might be good to have eyes on it and, and, and then recommending to them, hey, that we need your help with this or that um, in terms of maintenance on, on those kinds of things. Okay. So uh, this would include like having an, at least one more commissioner to deal with the beaches. Is that what you're saying? Or we maybe expand. So that's why I want to maybe yeah. just have it on the agenda next week to okay. discuss people's people's ideas around that. Yeah, maybe one, maybe someone on this committee is willing to st you know increase their their uh, their bandwidth <laughs> on that. Yeah. Not me, but uh, I yeah. I've wanted the same thing in the past. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing I just want to introduce as a potential agenda item for next time. Okay. Thank you. I just, we had somebody in the chat too, going back a bit on that um, discussion of the open space. And they said Freeman's Highway is run by DRBA and that we'd have to talk to them about planting pin oaks. I, I can actually answer that one. Uh, None oh. of those trees would be planted in the right of way. So okay. there's no need to talk to DRBA because it would all be on private property. Okay, great. Thank you, Janelle. Okay, so we have that agenda item for our next meeting. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, any Anything else? Any other observations, comments? Okay, well, hearing nothing further, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Barry. And a second? I second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It Good is 701. Pardon? I just said thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. 701, we are adjourned. Barry. Have thank a great you. evening. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.